and welcome to lesson 12.3 in the Alice tutorial series. In lesson 12.2, we introduced the while statement and how that was used, and we looked at it through the lens of uh, the helicopter animation. And today we're going to continue with the while statement because it is an important programming tool. The way that we're going to work with the while statement today is through a walking animation. So we're going to create kind of a crude walking animation for one of our objects on the screen and then have it walk in between different objects using the while statement to stop it when it gets near a certain object. So you, you should have an idea of what the while statement does already because that was done in the last lesson. So now let's go ahead and continue with our examples here in lesson 12.3. So here I am in a new Alice world, and before I do anything with the while statement, I want to animate a real quick or crude walking animation. So let's do that by uh, adding an object and selecting People Gallery. So scroll over until you find People, and I'm going to use my coach as kind of a go-to object here. So we have our coach, and as I've done in the past, we're just going to go ahead and position him into a rough standing position. So let's move this arm down to its side and flip the coach around, affect subparts, grab the other arm, and give him a rough standing position right here. So that looks pretty good. Now one thing that I want to do is I want the coach to uh, be able to remember this pose so I can get him back to a standing position. So with the coach selected, I'm going to go to Properties, I'm going to capture pose by clicking capture pose and I'm going to name his current position standing up or something to that effect so that I can put him back into the standing up. Now I'm going to have the coach walking forward so let's have a left step and a right step uh, pose for him as well. Affect subparts and we're going to try and make him swing his arms a little bit so we're going to have this arm swing forward just a bit while that leg goes backwards a bit, and then this leg's going to go forward while this arm goes back. And that looks about right. So now that we have that position, let's make sure the whole coach is selected. And we're going to capture this pose. This pose is going to be called first step. And then a second step will just be the opposite. So we'll take his arm and move this one so that it's in the back. So it's swinging behind him. Bring this leg forward. Bring his other leg back. And swing this arm forward. And just like we did the last time, make sure the entire coach is selected. Capture this pose, which will be called second step. And now we have uh, the coach with three positions that he can use, standing, a first step, and a second step. And let's go ahead and return him to the standing position. So I'm going to move him kind of towards the right-hand side of the screen, angle him a little bit, right-click, methods, set pose to coach standing up. And one other thing I don't like about the coach that I'm going to do real quick is make his whistle disappear. I don't necessarily like the whistle look on the coach, so select the whistle. I'm going to go to Properties and set Is Showing to False, so I can kind of take the whistle out of his mouth. So that's going to be our initial scene set up here. So I can close out of the Object Add window, and here I am in my Programming window. But before I go any further, I want to test and make sure that this walking animation looks okay, so that I don't have to make, make any adjustments in the future. So let's go ahead and drag this uh, first step over to the window. So we're going to have the coach take his first step and then I'm going to have the coach take his second step. And just to kind of look at this a couple of times, I'm going to loop this five times. When I hit play, I'll notice the walking animation looks okay, but the coach isn't going anywhere. That's because the poses are positioning the body of the coach realistically, but he's not being given the move forward command. So to address this, just take the uh, do together loop and we'll put the coach in first step while at the same time having the coach move forward. 
we'll, we'll go with uh, three meters right now. So select other and three. And then another do together loop where the coach takes his second step and moves forward another three meters. Now you might play around with the distances until you get something you like, but we're going to have the coach alternating between the first step and the second step, first step, second step. And you'll see we get, oh, three meters, a little bit too far. There's a bug. Uh, what I meant was 0.3 meters. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's change both of these to 0.3 meters. That was definitely a big error. It's a good thing we tested that. Hit play. And there we go. That's more in line with what I'm looking at right there. So I have the coach realistically walking forward, swinging his arms, and then when we get to the end of the loop, he stops. And when I get to the end of the loop, I simply want to have the coach move into his sta uh, standing up pose. So when we get to the end of this loop, the loop will break and the coach should stand up in a realistic fashion. And there he goes, walking forward. We get to the end of the loop and he resets to the standing position. So that's pretty good. That's what I'm looking for in my walking animation. Now that I have a walking animation that I can use, we can go ahead and integrate this with the while loop. To integrate this with a while loop, I'm gonna want another object out on the screen. So let's go ahead and add an object, and I'm gonna use the animals gallery and put a chicken out into this world on the other side of the screen. Now as it stands right now, I want the coach to walk to the chicken and stop. If I wanted to do this, I could start by telling the coach that I want him to turn to face the chicken to start this animation. So let's use coach, turn to face, chicken. Now when our animation starts, he'll turn to face the chicken, then this loop will have him walk forward five times, and then the coach will hit a standing position. So we can hit play and see what this, this ends up looking like. We'll speed it up a little bit and the coach gets a reasonable distance away and stops. Now, most of the time you would say, hey, that's pretty good. I can run with this in my animation. The disadvantage to doing an animation this way with a loop that runs a fixed number of times is that if I move the coach at all, let's say I move the coach over here, five times is gonna be entirely too many times to loop this to have a realistic animation. Because now if I hit play, the coach is still going to walk forward five loops, and now he's walking through the chicken. That's not at all what I want for my animation. Instead of using a loop where I set in a fixed number of times that the coach is going to uh, take a step, I want this to be a while loop. By using a while loop, this animation will run the same no matter where the coach is in relation to the chicken. So let me show you how this works. Take a while loop and drag it up until it's beneath coach turn to face chicken. We're going to put true in as a placeholder value. Instead of running this loop, I'm going to take the walking animation and drag it into the while loop instead of the traditional fixed number of runs loop. Since I don't need this anymore, I'm going to delete it. I now have what is the equivalent of an, 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 an infinite loop. Since true is always true, the coach will now walk forward forever. Since this while loop will never break, he'll never set his pose to the standing position. So if I hit play now, I'll, you'll notice the coach just walks forward until I break the program. He just goes forward forever. So we're going to change this code so that the coach automatically stops when he gets a certain distance away from the chicken. The way to do that is with a a coach function. So select the function tab with the coach already uh, highlighted and you'll notice that you've got a, a few proximity options here and the one that we're looking at is coach is at least threshold away from object. So instead of while true I want to run this while the coach is at least one meter away from the chicken. This while loop will evaluate the true as long as the coach is further away than one meter from the chicken. If at any point the coach gets within one meter of the chicken, this while loop will break because it will no longer evaluate the true. It will then be false, pushing the entire loop to break and encountering this coach set pose to standing up. 
If I run this animation now, the coach will walk until he's one meter away from the chicken, and then stand. This will work no matter where I have the coach's starting position. So if I take the coach and move him over here, the exact same animation is true. He will walk forward until he gets one meter away from the chicken, and then stop. So the nice thing about using the while loop is this animation becomes scalable. As I start to adjust my objects and reposition them in the scene, because maybe I want them to start somewhere different, or maybe I add some objects to the screen that block my view, no matter what I do to the scene, the coach is always going to walk exactly one meter from the chicken. This same concept works for just about any other object. So let's go ahead and add, oh, let's call it a cow. So I'll put a cow in the scene over here. And just like I did with the code to the chicken, I'm going to have the coach, after he reaches the chicken, turn to face the cow. So let's go to the coach methods and select turn to face. And he's going to turn the face the cow. Cow. Let me drag that over. Can't seem to grab it right here. There we go. So the coach is going to stand, then turn to face the entire cow. And once he's facing the entire cow, we'll have him walk until he's within one meter of the cow. To do this, I'm just going to copy the while loop that I have here. Right click, select make a copy, and now I have two while loops. And I'm going to take the second while loop and drag it to the end of my program. I have to change the argument as well, because this while loop will still evaluate to false because the coach is still within one meter of the chicken. Since he's walking to the cow, I'm going to change chicken to cow. So now the coach will be turning to face the cow, then moving forward until he's one meter away from the cow. Again, it doesn't matter where I start the coach, this animation will run the same either way. So we'll turn this up to a speed of three, he gets to the chicken, turns to face the cow, and then walks to the cow, which is a pretty good distance away. But luckily, I don't have to take a guess at how many times to run that loop. You'll notice the coach ran through the cow. I can see the cow's head poking through the coach. The reason for that is the cow is bigger than one meter. He's wa the, the coach is walking forward until he's one meter from the center point of the cow. Since we haven't done a whole lot with collision detection yet, there's a, there's a way to calculate where the coach should stop, but we're not quite there yet. So the simple fix to this is just to increase the meters away. So let's try this with three meters away and see if this looks any better. I'm going to kick the speed up, walk to the chicken, turn, and then walk to the cow. And three meters looks a little bit better, the coach stays in his walking position because the last line of code to have the coach standing up is not in there. So let's add that really quick. Stand up at the end of that while loop so that when the coach reaches the cow, the while loop breaks and the coach stands up. Now, it doesn't matter where I position the coach in the scene, he'll walk directly to the chicken, stop, turn to face the cow, walk directly to the cow, stop and come to a standing position. So that's how you can use the while loop to control walking animations in your programs. Most of the time when I'm writing programs, I would advise using a while statement as opposed to a fixed loop most of the time. There's going to be a few times where looping at a fixed number of times will be appropriate, but for the most part, the while loop is a bit more complicated but gives you a lot more power because the while statement lends itself to using these functions. They, they're somewhat self-explanatory, but you can do different conditional checks with a while loop that you can't do with a fixed loop. The fixed loop relies really heavily, particularly in walking animations, with uh, trial and error. And since we don't want to do a lot of trial and error, and since our scenes are going to change and objects are going to reposition themselves relative to one another, we want to make sure that our animations work no matter where the objects are on the screen. Like I said, I can move the, cow, the chicken over here, the cow over here, and the coach right here, and the animation still works. The coach is going to realistically walk, walk to the chicken, stop, 
turn, walk to the cow, and stop. So by using the while loop in these walking animations, I've created a world where object positioning doesn't matter, the animation works every time. So that's your example of the while statement, and that is pretty much going to conclude lesson 12.3 there. Let's go ahead and give you a chance to practice the while loop in the lesson 12.3 challenge program. So here we are guys, we are at the Lesson 12.3 Challenge Program, and let me tell you, of all the challenge programs we've done in the Alice Tutorial Series, this might be one of the most deceptively difficult. If we hit play, what we have is an infinite loop with uh, Sam and Nate, and I think this is Sam and this is Nate, but they're both people objects. Uh, Sam and Nate are essentially playing soccer and kicking a ball back and forth to one another. Now this animation is intentionally crude. Um, one of the things that we're not quite ready for, if you want to try it, you're certainly welcome to, but animating the soccer ball can be rather difficult uh, simply because the orientation, unlike other objects, I always know what way Nate and Sam are facing. The soccer ball looks the same, whether it's facing into the ground or whether it's facing left or right. So moving the soccer ball forward can be a little bit difficult while it's rotating. Since we haven't gone over that, I wouldn't worry about putting it in this challenge program yet unless you want to play around with the code on your own. There's really four parts to this animation. I have two while wow loops that are running, one that moves the ball from Nate to Sam and stops when the ball is a half meter away from Nate's right foot. I have another while loop that moves the ball from Nate to Sam and stops the ball when the ball is a half meter from Sam's right foot. So I have two while blocks that are running the ball moving back and forth. The other two kind of blocks of code I have have to do with setting poses. Both of these characters I made kicking poses for, and you can see them lifting their legs and moving them back. And those are uh, different poses that I set. So when the ball reaches, reaches its desired location, the character runs into the kick pose for a, a, about, I think I have it set for 0.2 seconds. But the kick animation plays by setting the pose to a kick and then resetting it right away. And while that's going on, turning the ball to face the other character's foot, and that's why you can see the ball kind of spin a little bit. I know this is a crude animation. Despite the fact that it's not the most realistic animation in the world, if you are able to do this, it will demonstrate that you have a grasp on how the while wow command works. So don't worry so much about the realism of this, of this animation. Just kind of get the ball to go back and forth together. And then all I did once I had the animation run in one cycle, I threw it in an infinite loop and it was able to continue forever. So this can be a rather challenging challenge program. So if you have any questions about it, something's not working for you or you have any additional questions, feel free to throw those in the comments and I'll help you out any way that I can so that you can get your program working. As always, thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series and have a great day.